This Weber repair video is all about replacing the igniter system on the Genesis family of grills. For this video, we're working on the 330 model, but what you'll learn here applies to all Genesis grills. Start work by disconnecting the gas supply to the grill you're working on. If it's a propane model you've got, take the tank out too. Even though you don't need to remove the lid, strictly speaking, to work on the igniter system, take it off anyway. It'll be safer that way. It can't come down on your hands. Remove the cotter pins and hinge pins, then lift the lid off and set it to one side in the upright position. You don't want to store it upside down because you could scratch the top of the lid. Replace the hinge pins and cotter pins back in the cook box so you don't lose these small parts. Remove the cooking grates and the flavorizer bars then clean out any ash or debris inside the cook box. You'll stay cleaner as you work and you'll end up with a neater job. Although you've been called in to repair an ignition problem, be sure to inspect the burner tubes while you're working. If corrosion has damaged the tubes, let the grill owner know that they'll need to be replaced. The igniter system is entirely behind the control panel, so start by pulling off the knobs, then open the doors and remove the two small machine screws underneath the control panel, one at each end. Lift the control panel up off its mounting clips, then slide it forward and rest it on top of the partially open doors. Remove the color-coded wires from the back of the igniter module, then carry the control panel to a work surface. You're going to need to work on it separately from the grill. A stainless steel heat shield holds plastic clips that support the wires, and this shield is held in place with screws, one at each end. Carefully pull the wires out of the clips in preparation to remove the heat shield. Lift the heat shield up and out of the way. You're going to need to examine it and possibly work on it later. Replacing the igniter electrodes is part of this job, and these are the new ones here. You can see the wires are color-coded, so it's very easy to know which electrode goes in which position. Pull each old electrode out one at a time and replace it with the new one that has the same color matched wiring. Here you can see the old electrode being slid out from the grooves in the burner tube and the new one slipped into place, pushed forward and locked. Here you can see the back of the igniter module that fits inside the control panel. This is the replacement here. Always be sure to use genuine Weber replacement parts. Then do a visual check to make sure you really have what you need. Loosen and remove the igniter button, then pull out the battery. There's another plastic nut that you need to remove, and this will allow the whole igniter module to slide out and away from the control panel. Inside the igniter module repair kit, you'll find a new igniter button, a new battery, and a new inner plastic nut. Take these out and get ready to install the new module now. There's nothing complicated about this. All you have to look for is the flat spot on the threaded portion of the igniter module and have it line up with the flat part of the hole in the control panel, like you see here. Install and tighten the plastic inner nut. Don't use any pliers on it, just your fingers. Then reinstall the battery and the igniter button on top. In order to work properly, the battery must be installed with the negative end facing outwards. As you would have noticed before, the heat shield holds some plastic wire clips, and the igniter module repair kit includes new clips. So regardless of the condition of the clips on the grill you're working on now, put the new ones in for maximum life. The repair kit we're using here includes large flat washers that go on the grill side of the heat shield, supporting the plastic clips better. Install the new clips now by pushing them all the way through the heat shield and all the way through the washers where they will lock in place. Set the heat shield into position and secure it to the manifold bracket with two screws, one on each end. The wire from the right hand electrode has to go underneath the gas lines as it travels to the left towards the igniter module. Clip all the wires into the wire clips, removing any slack between them. Set the control panel in place in front of the grill, then reconnect the color-coded wires to the igniter module. Clip the control panel 
down into position on the grill and replace the knobs. Don't replace the two screws mounting the control panel yet, not until you've tested the function of the burners. Re-establish the gas supply to the grill, then press and hold the igniter button and turn on the gas valves one at a time. A blue flame should emerge quickly along each burner tube. Be sure to test the side burner if the grill you're working on has one. If everything's working properly, reinstall the two small machine screws that secure the control panel, one at each end on the bottom. Replace the flavorizer bars, the cooking grates, the lid, along with the hinge pins and cotter pins. Test the smooth operation of the lid before getting ready to finish up. You may have been called in to repair an ignition problem with this grill, but you'll look a lot better and you'll be more likely to get repeat business if you leave the grill looking better than when you arrived. Please use soft, non-abrasive grill wipes to finish up. Thank you very much for taking the time to learn how to work properly on the Genesis family of grills. You're a valuable part of the Weber team.